record on the cloud. Perfect. Okay. My reminder to hit record. All right, well, thanks everybody for joining us for our fourth session of the Adaptation Planning and Practices for, Car for Forest Carbon Management online course. Um, week four, this means that we are basically at or approaching the halfway point of our course. Um, things go quickly. And so hopefully you're all um, getting caught up or staying caught up with everything as, as we move through the adaptation workbook process. So this week, we're going to be introducing the third step of the workbook, which is about evaluating challenges and opportunities. So our agenda today is a fairly straightforward one. We're going to introduce that third step of the workbook, um, describe some of the um, questions that you'll be evaluating, um, how you go about uh, inputting the information into the online adaptation workbook, the different parts and pieces of this third step. And then of course, briefly just talking about uh, the assignment for this week and the, and the homework. So hopefully this is a, a faster lecture than some of our previous weeks where we've you know, kind of taken some of those side roads into the considerations related to carbon. Um, this week is pretty straightforward. <clears throat> All right, so reminder, here's where we are in the adaptation workbook, which is step three. Again, it focuses on evaluating management objectives, considering climate change. Um, so in this step, we bring together the management goals and objectives you identified in step one, and the climate impacts that you identified in step two, to think about how climate change will affect your management for your project. <clears throat> um, and so in this step, you're going to weigh the challenges and opportunities that climate change presents and determine a feasibility rating for, for your management under current management. So sometimes step three can feel a little bit like step two, but they really are distinctly different. And, and so um, this slide kind of takes a closer look at how, uh, how those differences uh, sort of play out here. So step two is really about climate change effects on the place where you're working. How do you know? How does climate change impact the the area? Um, how vulnerable is your site? So it's it's really about place. In step three, then we begin evaluating how climate change will affect the feasibility of meeting your management goals and objectives. Again, under current management. So in essence. Can we do what we set out to do using the management that we typically use, given that you know, we've got all these additional stressors put on the system by a changing climate? And we keep these ideas separate in this additional step in the workbook because the site level vulnerability that we do in step two you know, is really drawn from site characteristics. Again, it's about place. And the ability for us to, to meet our management goals and objectives really, you know, I think vary based on sort of the values and perspectives of you, the landowner or land manager. Um, and so climate change impacts, you know, may, may make it more or less difficult to achieve some of those goals or objectives, um, even if you were kind of um, working in the same place, right? So you have sort of those, your site characteristics and your site vulnerability, but depending upon sort of your perspectives, um, you may rate things more or less feasible. So, so it really made sense to, to um, have this additional step to, to kind of weigh these, these options here. Okay, so in step three, we're gonna be asking the following questions. And this is again, where we connect climate change to our current management. So how will climate change make our objectives more or less difficult to achieve? Uh, do our current management activities and goals seem feasible given climate change? Um, or do we need to alter or modify our goals? <clears throat> uh, 
The first thing you'll do in step three is identify climate related challenges to meeting your management objectives. Um, in this step, we'll list ways in which climate change impacts or vulnerabilities make it more difficult to achieve each management objective. So, for example, you know, warmer temperatures, drier conditions may limit the regeneration of a, a particular desired tree species and make it more challenging to maintain that species into the future, right? So that, that's a challenge. Um, we really, with both of these um, challenges and object uh, and challenges and opportunities, we, we wanna focus on concerns related to ecological or environmental challenges. So um, there'll be a place to th be thinking about sort of policy and economic and all these other things that really impact things. But we're really thinking at this point about uh, the ecological challenges. So I'm gonna kind of walk through a, a, a couple of different examples so you can see how this looks. Um, and so here's some ob example objectives kind of drawn from a, a couple of different past projects along with uh, the challenges for those objectives. So <clears throat> for one project that was focusing on habitat protection for Eastern box turtle, uh, the managers recognized that it might be harder to maintain habitat given drier conditions or fluctuating water levels or reduced snowpack. For another project that focused on um, breeding habitat for interior uh, forest songbirds, they identified the challenge associated with declines in conifer species that are really important component of uh, songbird habitat. And then for another project that had a focus on uh, recreation, um, they had an objective of maintaining existing and developing um, new walking trails. And so they recognized the challenge of extreme precipitation um, and uh, the potential for damage from erosion and kind of the costs and, and um, uh, work associated with maintenance and, and you know, hazard tree removal and those sorts of things. Okay, and so once you've listed your challenges for that objective, then you begin listing any opportunities that climate change may create for achieving your management objectives. And, and so, you know, this is important to recognize that not everything that relates to climate change is, is bad and negative. There are some things that could, could be positive and it's really important to recognize those. Um, and so here we focus on ways in which climate change impacts may make it easier to achieve a management objective or maybe create new management opportunities. You know, so one example being like, and I think this is one that I see come up a lot is that increases in, in small or medium scale disturbances could in, help increase structural heterogeneity within a stand or in a landscape. Like before, we want to really focus on concerns related to, to ecology or environmental uh, conditions. Okay, so just continuing on those three examples that we looked at before, um, for the Habitat for Eastern Box Turtle in that first row, the opportunity that they identified is that uh, increases in spring precipitation may offset some of the concerns about uh, drier conditions for the box turtle. Um, for the breeding songbird habitat, uh, as I mentioned before, many bird species focus on structure um, over species mix. And so changes in composition uh, may matter less than you know, some, some other factors. <clears throat> uh, and then for the recreation example, the opportunities they, they identified was that, well, maybe trails may dry out earlier in the season. Um, and so, you know, that might represent some opportunities for a longer season uh, uh, for use. Okay, so essentially you can kind of see what we're doing here is we're sort of weighing the, the, the balance between how, what 
what are the challenges that we face and what are the opportunities that we can see. And so as we begin documenting these, we can kind of see more clearly how climate change might affect our project and begin to evaluate the odds, you know, whether the odds are stacked against us or maybe in our favor. Next, uh, after listing the op challenges and opportunities, then we evaluate the feasibility of achieving our objectives, given these challenges and opportunities that we've defined. And again, this is based on sort of our current management, um, sort of thinking about sort of business as usual management. Um, and you can think about feasibility uh, really on multiple timeframes, right? So you define timeframes in your step one of with your goals and objectives saying like, you know, we have the goal of this objective in the next 10 to 15 years. So it makes sense to think about, about your feasibility in that same time frame. but you can also think about more like near-term feasibility. You could think about long-term feasibility as well. You could think about like, yeah, it, it, what happens in the next 10, 15 years matters, but what about sort of 30, 50 years from now? Um, do we need to be starting to think about setting ourselves up or setting up, you know, the, the next generation of managers for success here? <clears throat> so, you know, high feasibility really is just existing management options are, are likely to continue to work, even under climate change. You know, we see opportunities outweighing the challenges. That's a, a good, you know, a good sign that we can continue kind of with, with our current objectives and goals. Moderate feasibility is more when we're getting into kind of that, uh, some challenges have been identified for meeting management objectives, um, but these might be able to be overcome using some existing management options uh, or benefits, you know, may balance out those challenges. <clears throat> and then low feasibility is, is really when we feel like those challenges are really getting stacked up against us and that our existing management may not be su sufficient to overcome those challenges. So uh, going back to our three examples, you can just see here, you know, the managers kind of rated things medium, low, medium or high. And in particular, you know, the, that re last recreation example was one where the managers felt like, yeah, you know, earlier drying out of the, of the trails is like, that's eh, an opportunity, but really the big issue here for us is, is those extreme precipitation and that's happening more and more. And they felt like that was low feasibility kind of given their current management. And, and for that second example on the, the interior uh, songbird breeding habitat, you know, they kind of laid it out in that description of the opportunity saying like, well, it seems like, you know, changes in composition may not be a big deal uh, for us. Okay, so when you go through the workbook, you're gonna get a prompt here that it's important to slow down at this point and really take time to consider, you know, what all of this means. Um, sometimes we get into the to the mode of, you know, barreling ahead here, um, but this is really a, a point where we want to encourage folks. And the whole point of this this third step is to really make us stop and think: Are we going to continue with our objectives as we've written them, or or do we need to adjust them? And, and this is really recognizing, you know, that climate change may make some management goals and objectives that we, you know, started out with kind of what we thought we were really aiming towards for the, for our project, a lot more difficult to achieve in the future. And, and um, you know, there are situations in which we may need to consider altering or refining them to better account for these anticipated climate impacts. Um, particularly if some management objectives have low feasibility, if they no longer seem like they make sense to, to continue to pursue that objective under climate change, that's 
you know, that those low feasibility goals are the ones that you probably want to stop and, and really think about um, whether or not your, your objectives or even your broader goals still make sense or maybe need to be re redefined. Okay. Um, and so I, yeah, we, we kind of just saw the slide already. That was just a repeat. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so the workbook cycle here really just kind of shows that here's this place where with, with the third step, you know, do we need to go back, jump back to step one and modify our objectives? And, and this is um, kind of, you know, we've mentioned on multiple occasions that the workbook is really designed to be iterative. It's designed for you to jump around at, into the various steps, add more information as you think of it. And, and so it's very easy at this point to, to jump back to step one and, and redefine those goals and objectives if you feel like you need to. And the nice thing about the, you know, the, the way that we've kind of set up the workbook to enable this is that if you go back and you redefine a goal or objective, it automatically then carries that forward um, to, to that step three. So you don't need to change anything else in the workbook if you go back and change your, your step one goals and objectives. All right. <clears throat> so finally, there's there's a spot here for other considerations. There's there's uh, you know a recognize we all recognize that there's all kinds of other things that play into whether or not something is feasible. It could be social, financial, institutional factors. It could be markets. You know whether or not there's a market for for um, for pulp wood. You know whether or not there's funding available to do certain things. All these things are important considerations. They're just not, you know, the focus of the climate change impacts and sort of the ecological considerations that we're focusing on. Um, but, you know, the part of the, the, the value of the workbook is it's a place for us to put all these ideas together. And so, um, so there's a, a, a spot here where you can detail why, you know, um, these why you think a feasibility might be low um, or or not, um, and and what some of those other factors are that may cons uh, contribute. And so here's just what some of that looks like, you know, other considerations for uh, for the box turtle habitat is you know there's just high uncertainty about habitats will be affected if the turtle is present, they need to maintain the habitats for as long as possible. Um, for the wreck trails, you know, this was a, a really big issue in terms of funding. Do they have the funding and, and in turn sort of the, the um, staff capacity to, to deal with the needed improvements? All right, so, <clears throat> Kind of the take home message for this step is, you know, to use this time really to, to ensure that you've created goals and objectives that are likely to succeed. Um, given, you know, all of the you've kind of thought about in last week's homework with, with step two, thinking about climate change impacts and your site vulnerability. So again, there's a couple of helpful tips for you. You know, um, the challenges and opportunities really should be related to climate change. Um, those other management challenges or opportunities that you wanna record that aren't related to climate change go on to, under that other considerations. Um, so really, you know, it's tempting to, to start to bring in these other things, but, but if you kind of think of something and think, well, that's not really a climate challenge or opportunity, put it in that other category, other considerations category. And again, that difference between step two and step three. Don't feel like you need to state, you know, all the climate change impacts all over again in step three. Really, it's it's just about kind of 
prioritizing kind of the biggest management challenges or opportunities that you see and focus on those. So you may have had, you know, 10 climate impacts that were relevant for your site, but you don't need to address all 10 of those in these um, challenges and opportunities step here. Okay, so um, just to give you kind of a little bit more, I think, insight into kind of how this all fits together into this coherent kind of logical process, we're going to go through um, an adaptation example. Um, this is for the Green Mountain Audubon Center uh, with some managers from uh, Audubon, Vermont. Um, and this was a project that used the forest carbon management menu as one of our first uh, demonstration projects to use the carbon management menu. Um, and, um, and, and it's one I think that we've referenced in some of the past lectures and we'll probably continue again because it's just, I, I think, a nice example of how, how it all kind of fits together. And you can see the link there. You can go read more about the project at our forest adaptation website. So the management goal here, the, the managers define their goals at, at really, um, or at least one of their primary goals as the long-term production of, of high value saw timber, as well as kind of balancing that with breeding habitat for neotropical uh, migratory songbirds, and then carbon mitigation value for the forest. And, and they had a, some objectives that kind of fit underneath that broad goal, but then some, some additional um, objectives that kind of related to some other goals. Um, but those uh, management objectives I'm gonna kind of focus on for just the demonstration of this example here is um, improving forest health and encouraging regeneration, in particular dealing with beach competition. Um, maintaining trails and access for visitor use. So this, this one is one that kind of related to a recreation focus goal. Um, controlling invasives, preventing their establishment. Um, and then increasing species diversity, especially of softwoods and structural diversity, especially coarse woody material. And that those last two kind of related to the, the um, forest bird habitat uh, goals. So climate change impacts, they, they listed a whole bunch, but for, for some of these objectives that I'm highlighting here, it was really about warming winters and northward migration of insect pests. We were concerned about uh, heavy precipitation and um, what that meant for uh, nutrients, excess nutrients, um, increased frequency of extreme weather events leading to more disturbance, leading to uh, the, the opportunity for the spread of invasive species. Um, and then reduced habitat suitability for some of the common tree species, shorter, warmer winters with reduced snowpack. Uh, and then related to that, uh, deer browse. Um, so, so heavier deer browse because of the warmer winters and snowpack and what that means for um, challenges for regeneration. Essentially, deer don't eat the beech, but they love to eat the maple and the oak seedlings. All right, so uh, let's kind of dig in on, on the step three and see kind of how they kind of thought through some of these objectives and identify challenges and opportunities. So for improving forest health and encouraging regeneration, you know, they they, they really identified that challenge of deer browse pressure with the milder winters. So really kind of honing in on those, those impacts and, and, and seeing that as, as a big challenge for them. Um, you know, but they recognize that there was an opportunity here because they focus on, um, for this property, recreation and, and public access for recreation. And they don't currently allow hunting, but they saw this as an opportunity that maybe they could do that. Maybe they could um, establish uh, a program that allows for some very limited deer hunting to, to um, reduce some of that browse pressure. For that second objective ar around trails um, and access for visitor use, um, the challenge of course is extreme precipitation, erosion, um, wind throw, you know, and hazard trees, that sort of thing. 
Um, but they saw an opportunity then that when those events occur, then they could um, reroute trails and, and kind of improve the trail system at their site. <clears throat> Invasives, you know, I think it's kind of everybody's in the same boat. It's just something that continually is a continued investment. Um, but they saw an opportunity that kind of because they're uh, a demonstration site for their foresters for the birds program. And there's, you know, uh, they have a lot of science education um, work that, that there's the potential for service groups to help out. <clears throat> All right. The um, objective of increasing species diversity, especially softwoods, this is one, you know, where they saw really a particular challenge in terms of hemlock. They have an overstory of mature hemlock over this uh, more um, northern hardwoods uh, uh, species composition. And, you know, they saw that hemlock woolly adelgid really posed uh, or mortality of hemlock due to the hemlock woolly adelgid insect po posed a, a big challenge just because of it's such an important structural component. Um, and the opportunity, which was probably a much smaller opportunity there, is that they said, well, okay, if that happens, that might create some, some, play, some increases in some other species like red oak. Um, and then, of course, structural diversity and coarse woody material, there's an opportunity there with disturbance and, and wind throw and, and those sorts of things that can add more structure. Um, this is the next step, which we'll be thinking about starting next week, but just to kind of follow the, the train of thought here through the adaptation example with the Green Mountain Audubon Center, they identified then a number of adaptation tactics. And this table uh, is one that just kind of shows how these various adaptation actions contribute to both um, adaptation benefits, carbon benefits, as well as one of their primary um, management goals, which is around bird habitat, you know, and so they they identified areas in their management plan where they were going to um, maintain a no harvest area, and you know that allows for um, you know uh, undisturbed habitat for for songbirds, supports landscape connectivity for adaptation, you know, allows trees to grow larger and, and continue storing wood um, or carbon in, in biomass there um, in those areas. So provides the carbon benefits. And then they, they identified a couple of other, I'm showing a couple of other actions. I had a whole bunch more you can read about at the, at the website uh, link there, um, but they identified some group selection um, and areas where they were going to do some active management to retain snags and coarse woody debris and then in some of those harvested areas promote red oak so site those gaps around some existing red oak which isn't very prevalent um, on their site but really trying to to improve um, or increase red oak all right and i'm not going to go through each one of those um, columns there and then lastly, just to kind of bring it home, uh, the last step of the workbook is about monitoring. And we're really interested in with this monitoring step and thinking about how can we tell or evaluate if we're helping um, to, to meet our management goals and objectives. So it's really about effectiveness monitoring. And so, <clears throat> you know, they identified a number of things. And, you know, these really ideally should be connected to your management goals and, object and objectives because it's about, you know, effectiveness of meeting those. So, you know, they had a they had an objective around controlling invasive species. So it makes sense to monitor invasives, monitoring erosion erosion on trails, those sorts of things. Um, they had a, an objective of on tree regeneration, so doing some monitoring of of regeneration, particularly in their harvested gaps. And then of course, this is all about, uh, it's an Audubon, and so it's all about forest birds. And so they you know, really wanted to link to 
um, are they maintaining bird species habitat um, and uh, through monitoring of abundance of, of birds. All right, <clears throat> so just some, some pro tips here for, for step three. Um, challenges and opportunities can be listed related to, to each objective. So, so for every objective that you identify in step one, you'll have, a, you'll have a, a place in the workbook to put both a challenge and an opportunity. You saw in um, one of those examples with the Green Mountain Audubon Center that um, I don't think there, there was really a challenge associated with it. And so if, if you can't think of a challenge or an opportunity, that's okay, leave it blank. Um, but do give it some thought. Um, and so you want to click on add a challenge to add a new text box for each challenge rather than listing them all into a box in one box. So for each objective, if you can think of three different things, add a different uh, text box for each of those three things. Don't list them all in the same text box. And then if you need to reconsider your objectives, as I mentioned before, jump back to step one, and then the adaptation workbook will save all those changes and carry them forward. We do have those uh, tutorials um, in the course materials. And so, you know, anytime you, you get, you feel like you're stuck on this, um, it might be helpful to just uh, refer to those tutorials to give yourself a little uh, help. <clears throat> um, this one, is a lot easier, I think, from the perspective of kind of giving you the, the, the lowdown on how to um, put this information into the adaptation workbook. Um, I really just have this one slide. Uh, so laser pointer here. So you've got, uh, so you're on step three here, evaluating objectives. You'll have your, your various objectives listed here. Um, based on each one of your management topics. And so when you click on, um, for example, dry mixed conifer forest type objectives, those objectives will, will then come up here on this right-hand portion of your, your window. And then um, you'll have the, six, the, the arrows for the expand and contract. And so you'll expand those and then you'll see um, for each goal and objective here, then the these add a challenge, add an opportunity, and then rate your feasibility. And then there's you've got your the box here for kind of describing why you rated your feasibility the way you did. Um, just kind of notes for yourself. And then here down here is this other considerations box. So for, for, for that particular objective, what are the other things that might um, kind of play into feasibility um, that aren't climate related? Right. So that's it for step three. Um, the, um, so your, your assignment for next week is, you know, Make sure that you have kind of gone through and completed step two. Hopefully everybody by the end of last week has felt really pretty good about their step one goals and objectives. Um, I had the opportunity to, to speak with a number of, of te project teams last week. It was great. Um, I'm assuming if I didn't hear from you that, that you're feeling good about where you're at with step one. Um, and, uh, and I know a num number of people were working on step two as well. And so um, hopefully, if you haven't finished step two, do that first and then, uh, and then complete step three, you're evaluating your management objectives. Of course, there's always the homework after the, the workbook step it shouldn't take you very long. Um, do uh, reach out to us though. Um, we're having discussion sessions this week, so tomorrow and Wednesday, both at 11 Eastern, 10 Central. Um, but there are, we, you know, the instructors are here for you. So if you, if you didn't get a chance to check in with us last week and you do want to, if you've got questions, um, it's honestly, it's the most fun part of, 
of teaching this course is getting to talk to, to folks and hearing what you're doing and hearing what you're struggling with and, and just getting to know you a little bit better. And so I, I really encourage you to, to, to reach out. Um, I, I love to, to be um, able to have some one-on-one -on -one time with folks. <clears throat> and then um, this isn't in your syllabus, but it is in the course materials in the online workbook is um, if you've got the time, if you're caught up, you finish step three and you've got a little bit of time um, next week when we start working on step four, which is the adaptation actions, um, that, that's a big step. And so if you can get a little bit of, of reading done ahead of time, so you're kind of primed to hit the ground running next week, um, take a look at the forest carbon management adaptation strategies and approaches menu, or if you're interested in looking at any of the other menus, <clears throat> um, take a little bit of time to pull those up and review those. Make, start to familiarize yourself uh, with those. It'll make next week's um, work a lot easier. Uh, next week is, is one of the weeks that is a little bit of a heavier lift, and we'll, we'll also have a bonus um, presentation next week, bonus lecture. So, so there's a lot to do next week. So um, on that note, so next week, this same time as always, uh, on, on April 18th is the lecture to introduce step four. And again, a reminder tomorrow and Wednesday, we'll have discussion sessions. These are more about you talking than they are about me or Danielle or Luke talking. And so be prepared. So we really want you to, to have given a little bit of thought to step three, if possible. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to ask you to be describing some of your top five climate impacts from step two from last week. So hopefully you've completed those and you'll have some, you know, some things to share about your climate impacts. And then um, some, some examples of how your site conditions affect your vulnerability rating from step two. And then um, we want you to be able to at least start to talk a little bit about your feasibility. So you may not have you know, by the time discussion session rolls around this week, you may have not completed step three, but um, do take a little bit of time to, to think about it, think about feasibility in terms of those challenges and objectives, because um, we are going to hopefully have some uh, plenty of time to discuss uh, those, um, those considerations for each one of our projects. All right. Well, I didn't leave myself as much time as I had hoped, but we have plenty of time uh, still left for, uh, for discussion. So I am gonna stop the recording here.